Hello everyone. Today we have a new chapter in SST that is natural resources, land, soil and water. We all know that the natural resources are very important for economic development, but the distribution of these resources in the world is highly uneven. Land, soil, water, vegetation, animals are everywhere while minerals are and energy resources are concentrated in the few regions only in india we can see a variety of various types of land and we can see the great himalayas in the northern parts of india we can also see the great indian plains in the northern parts of india whereas we can see the Malwa Plateau, Chota Nagpur Plateau and the Deccan Plateau in the Peninsula part of India. Whereas we have Eastern Ghats and Western Ghats for the coastal areas. So we have a variety of different type of land. Land is used for different purposes such as cultivation of crops, grazing of animals, building houses and roads, mining etc. This is called land use pattern. The ever growing population is responsible for changes in the land use pattern. It has led to conversion of the forested area into the croplands and croplands into non agricultural uses such as roads and buildings, etc. The land use pattern of a country depends on the number of factors like the topography soil, climate availability of water, and mineral resources. Keeping in view the nature of land and requirements of the community, land use has to be planned properly to get the best results. Careless use of land may create problems like shortage of croplands, soil erosion, deforestation and desertification. Now let's move to the next topic that is soil resources. The uppermost thin layer of earth's crust that supports all vegetation is known as soil. All living beings including plants and animals depend directly or indirectly on soil for their survival. Temperature and rainfall are the main climatic factors affecting soil formation. Frequent changes in temperature and presence of water quicken soil formation through increased weathering of rocks. Weathered rocks do not get accumulated on steep slopes. They are moved down the slope by water and under the force of gravity. Besides weathering of rocks, moving water and winds also contribute to soil formation. Soil has been identified into two main zonal groups, paddle firs and paddocles. Paddle firs are the soil types found in humid climate of high latitudes, example coniferous forest, mid-latitude deciduous forest and low-latitude tropical forest lands. Whereas paddocles are those soils which are found in arid, semi-arid and sub-humid areas of the world. Now let's talk about the soils of India. Here you can see that we have a number of soils in our country. First is alluvial soil, then we have black soil, laterite soil, red soil and mountain soil. Alluvial soil is very fertile soil and supports the growth of agricultural crops. This kind of soil is found in northern plains and east coastal plains of India. Black soil is found on the Deccan Plateau covering large parts of Maharashtra, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh. It is black in color and is most suitable for the agriculture. Laterite soil is found in patches on the Meghalaya Plateau and Western Ghats where rainfall is very heavy. It is poor in quality. Then we have red soil. It is found in the western part of the Peninsular Plateau. It is reddish in color. It is not very fertile, just like laterite soil. Mountain soil. This is an undeveloped soil and found on the Himalayan region and it's not at all good for agriculture. Now the problem is 
that the soil gets decayed by the time and the term for this is known as soil erosion depletion and erosion are the two major problems of soil continuous cultivation of crops robs the soil of its fertility if the same crop is grown every year the soil may get deficient in some nutrients there are physical and human factors which also contribute to soil erosion physical factors include intensity of rainfall and velocity of wind whereas human factors include deforestation overgrazing overuse of chemical fertilizers and faulty irrigation practices as our irrigation leads to salination so that means that soil got eroded only when the physical and the human factors affect them totally so now to stop soil from getting eroded we need to conserve it so the next topic is soil conservation the wise and rational use of soil so as to protect it from erosion is called conservation if we don't take steps to protect soil from erosion then life on earth would become difficult we must protect forest from destruction more trees are to be planted in open areas as roots of trees help to bind the soil together measures should be taken to control floods by building check dams counter plucking crop rotation controlling overgrazing are some measures by which soil conservation is possible some of the methods used by the farmers across the world to conserve soil are counter plucking terrace farming crop rotation another effective method of soil conservation is afforestation or planting of trees on a large scale planting a large number of trees reduces wind speed and free flow of water and thus stops soil from being carried away use of eco friendly fertilizers and planting of indigenous trees and shrubs are significantly helpful in soil conservation then we have one more topic that is water resources two thirds of the earth is covered with water most of the earth's fresh water is found in rivers streams lakes and ponds the saline water in the ocean has to be treated before it is fit for consumption water is an indispensable resource because all types of life are dependent on it fresh water is used in agriculture and also for industrial and domestic consumption but its availability uh, depends on the amount of rainfall in an area the amount of available fresh water may also vary according to the pattern of consumption in a region in many countries including india river valley projects have been developed to utilize water for various purposes for multi purpose projects dams are constructed and water is collected in reservoir this water is put to various uses such as irrigation hydroelectric power generation afforestation navigation etc most of the large rivers across the world have been utilized for this purpose also we should understand that the water is limited means the fresh water is limited and the consumption is high so the government at various levels needs to develop ways to conserve and manage water resources so that's all for this chapter i hope that the chapter is clear to you thank you students